Hello guys, welcome to Cloud Tech. So today is day two of our Java interview question answer series. Today we are going to discuss very important questions about uh, string and wrapper classes. And after this video, you will have complete understanding of what gets asked uh, in the interview for strings. So let's get to our first question. What do you mean by string immutability? So before going to string immutability, uh, let's understand what is string. So string is any sequence of character. If you see here A, B, and C, it is a sequence of character and hence this is known as string. So let's get to the question. What do you mean by string immutability? So in Java, all the strings are immutable. And once the string is created, the content of that string cannot be changed. So let's try to understand that with the help of an example. So here string str equal to ABC. Now what we try to do is str.concat pqr. Now the result of this will be ABC PQR. But the whole point is whenever you do any modification operation, an entirely new string gets created. But the existing string that we created in the first place, that is ABC, is never modified. So with every modification operation, a new string gets created. So this is the concept of string immutability. So let's try to understand some of the key points. String once created can never be changed that we just saw the ABC object is not changed and new object gets created. So a new string gets created with every modification. So these are the two important points to keep in mind when it comes to string immutability. Let's get to the next question. What are, where are strings stored in Java? So this is a very important question and this shows your understanding about uh, strings. So there are uh, two ways to create string. One is using string literal and one is using new keyword. So let's try to understand what is string literal. Anything that is specified between double quotes is known as string literal. So if I specify ABC between double quotes, this is known as string literal in Java. So I create two strings here, string str equal to ABC and string str1 equal to ABC. Both are string literal. So string literal are stored in string constant pool. So this is very important. All the string literals in Java are stored in string constant pool. So there is a pool where all the strings are stored. Same string literal is reused from string constant pool. So consider this example. We have string str equal to abc and we create a new string str1 which points to abc. So as we saw, this is already present in our string constant pool and hence str1 will reuse the same string. So in this case, only one object will be created in string constant pool and str1 reuses that existing object. So that is about the first way of creating string. Let's try to understand the next way, which is using the new keyword. So here what we do, string str equal to new string abc. So with new, a new object gets created. So string is an object in Java and every object gets stored in heap. So whenever you create a string using new keyword, it gets stored in heap directly. So all the objects in Java get stored in heap. Okay, so literal gets created in string constant pool. And when you create a string with new, it gets created in your heap. So let's move to the next question. How many string objects will be created and where? So this is a very important question, guys. So string str equal to new string abc. And here you have to tell how many objects get created. So there is a catch. So in this code, two objects will be created. So two string objects will be created. And where they will be created? One in the string constant pool because as we know, this is literal. ABC between double quotes is a literal. So this gets created in your string constant pool. And when you call this new string ABC, this, this gets created in your heap. So the answer is two objects will be created, one in string constant pool and one in heap. And the final result will be str will point to the object in the heap because you are creating new string. Okay. The two objects will be created, one in SCP, one in heap, and str will point to the heap. Okay, so let's move to the next question. Should we use string concatenation in loops? So the answer is no, you should never do string concatenation in loops. Because whenever you do any modification, a new string object is created and string object creation is expensive. So that is the reason you should never use concatenation operation in loops. So let's try to understand with the help of an example. So here I have a string demo where what I'm doing, 
I am creating a string str and I am concatenating i 50,000 times. Okay, so let's try to run this. So I'll run this as a Java application. And as you see, it is taking time to create 50,000 objects. And it took around four seconds to create 50,000 string objects. Now let's try to demonstrate the same thing with the help of string buffer. So I'll create, I'll just run it. And as you see, it took only 28 milliseconds. So string buffer is way faster when it comes to loops. So you have to make sure you use string buffer or string builder whenever there is concatenation operation in loops. So here is uh, an assignment for you. Um, replace this 50,000 with 100K, uh, which is one lakh and uh, just see how much time it takes and comment in the comment section. So let's get to our next part, which is what is the difference between string and string buffer? So here, the difference is very important. String is immutable. We saw whenever we do any modification, a new string object is created. Whereas string buffer is mutable, which means whenever you change or modify the existing string buffer object, that existing string buffer object gets modified and new object is not created as in case of string. So the next point is new object is created with every modification operation. We saw this same object is modified. So this is very important as we are not creating multiple objects in case of string buffer. Hence, same object gets modified and it is not an expensive operation. Both of them are thread safe. String is thread safe because it creates a new object. String buffer is also thread safe because it uses synchronized keyword at the method level. So both of them are thread safe. Let's move to the next question. What is the difference between string buffer and string builder? So both of them are mutable. String buffer is also mutable and string builder is also mutable, but there's a basic difference between both of them. And the difference is string buffer is thread safe, whereas string builder is not thread safe. So if you are sure that you don't need thread safety and you are good without thread safety, then you can go for string builder also. Let's move to the next question, which is what is the equals and equal to equal to in string? So these two things are used for string comparison and these are very important things. Uh, this will be asked in your interview for sure if you have around uh, one to two years of experience and you should be able to answer this question. Uh, consider this, we are creating two strings, str1 and str2 and both are pointing to ABC. By now we know anything that is specified between double quotes is a literal and it gets stored in your string constant pool. So we created two literals and that will be stored in your string constant pool. Now the question is, if I do str1 equal to equal to str2, then what will be returned? So the whole point is whenever you do equal to equal to operation, it compares the references. If you see, in string literal pool, only one string is you, uh, created and second time when you take the reference, the same string is reused. So both the references are pointing to the same string. And if we do equal to equal to, then it compares for references. So if I try to compare str1 with reference str2, I see they both are pointing to the same string and hence it will return true. So in conclusion, whenever you do equal to equal to comparison, it compares for references. And there is a second way where you create a new string. So in case of new string, every time we call new string, a new object gets created in the heap. So str3 gets created in the heap, a new object. And then str4 gets created in the heap. This is again a new object. So when I do str3 equal to equal to str4, then it returns false. Why? Because str3 and str4, the references are pointing to different objects. So they are completely different objects. And hence the references equal to equal to returns false. So if you want to compare in this case, if you just want to compare if the contents are equal, in that case, what you can do, there's a method known as equals. So if you do str3.equals str4, then it compares the actual content, which is ABC and in second object also ABC. And hence this returns true. So if you want to do reference comparison, use equal to equal to. If you want to do the content comparison, then use equals. So this is very important for your interview.
let's move to the next topic which is wrapper classes we have two more questions in wrapper classes and then we will be done for day two so the first thing uh, that often gets asked is what is wrapper class and why it is needed so wrapper class is an object representation of primitive type so consider this you have a lot of data types you have int you have float you have double but all these are primitive data types now wrapper class is object representation of that primitive data type so in case of int uh, we see here int is primitive and the wrapper class representation is integer float is primitive and the wrapper class representation is float so every primitive type has object representation of it that is known as a wrapper class and wrapper class objects are also immutable this is very important as strings are immutable wrapper class objects are also immutable and for each primitive data type there is equivalent wrapper class type okay now the next question is why it is needed why we needed wrapper class in first place so your collection framework you might have seen list will come to all these things in the upcoming days uh, will come to collections will come to threads will come will cover each and every topic here so collection framework does not allow primitive type so if you try to uh, create a collection with int it won't allow so that is the reason wrapper classes are required so if you want to use collection with wrapper class with the primitive type it is not possible and hence you need wrapper classes uh, the second case is whenever you create integer you need to assign a value or uh, if it is an instance variable a default value gets assigned so in case of uh, integer default value is zero but what if you don't know the value in that case you want to assign null and that is not possible in case of primitive data type and hence wrapper class allows null values as well uh, uh, just a note here while dealing with uh, wrapper classes uh, there is a concept of caching so if the value is between minus 128 to 127 then the value is cached but uh, the point to consider is whenever you create wrapper class using integer dot value of or you directly assign value to the wrapper class uh, then only it is cached if you try to create new object out of this so then the value is not cached so this might get asked in your interview what is caching in case of wrapper classes okay so let's move uh, to the last question which is what is auto boxing and what is unboxing so consider before wrapper classes we had only the primitive data type which is int float and double but just to maintain the backward compatibility if you see here integer a equal to 2000 then uh, this is not an object 2000 is not an object then what is happening in this case so this case where you can assign the primitive data type to the wrapper class type so the conversion from primitive data type to the wrapper class type is known as auto boxing auto is automatic and boxing is where you convert from your primitive type to your wrapper class type so integer can be assigned to integer wrapper class perfect no extra step is required and this is auto boxing where you convert your uh, primitive data type to wrapper class data type now the reverse is also possible where you have integer b equal to uh, 5000 and then you try to uh, assign this integer wrapper class to your primitive data type so the conversion from your wrapper class to the primitive data type is known as unboxing so if you see wrapper class object can be assigned directly to primitive type so i can assign b to c directly and the conversion the unboxing will happen automatically so this is known as unboxing so that is the end of today's video uh, see you with more upcoming topics uh, tomorrow